real life no real life Yeah, we are live now. I think okay. you can go ahead. Okay, that's lovely. So, good afternoon and uh, welcome. My name is Priya Srinivasa and I'm part of the policy team at WhatsApp. I welcome you all to this fireside chat event and the launch of the Digital Skill Champions Program, a joint initiative by NSTC and WhatsApp. This is in line with the Government of India's vision of making India the skill capital of the world. India has the globe's largest informal sector and a diverse workforce across the gray, blue, and gig economy segments. This partnership is aimed to scale the impact that WhatsApp and NSDC make in their respective fields of technology and skilling. The joint program will now come alive across the country through a series of engagements over the course of the next 12 months. This partnership will also enable the community of NSDC skill trainers to encourage an interest among students towards entrepreneurship and help in launching their small businesses. The training will introduce skill seekers to the WhatsApp business app and highlight the many aspects of in-app tools that help to automate and thereby enable small businesses achieve their skill aspirations. And now with that background, let me jump straight into introducing our most learned speakers for today's fireside chat. Dr. Manish Kumar, MD and CEO at the National Skill Development Corporation, and Mr. Shivnath Tukral, Director of Public Policy at WhatsApp. Dr. Manish Kumar is the MD at NSDC, and during his tenure, he has particularly focused on improving the quality of private sector delivery of skills across priority sectors and making skills in India aspirational. Prior to his time at NSDC, he worked for the World Bank as India Country Coordinator and Senior Economist. He was also extensively uh, worked at the World Bank in Middle East and North African countries. Manish also served in the Indian Administrative Services, occupying various positions in the government of Tripura up to 2011. He was selected as a Mason Fellow by the Harvard University in 2003 for his exceptional leadership in empowering tribal women in Tripura. Manish was also trained as an engineer from IIT Dhanbad and holds a degree in public administration from Harvard University and a PhD in public policy from the George Washington University. Let me now introduce our second speaker, Mr. Shivnath Tukral, who is the Director of Public Policy at WhatsApp. Prior to his role at WhatsApp, Shivnath was the Managing Director of Carnegie Endowment for International Peace and set up the Global Think Tank's India office leading operations and fundraising. Shivnath spent the first 15 years of his career as a journalist with NDTV and as the prime time presenter with a special interest in business news and policy analysis. He also later established the network's business channel, NDTV Profit, in 2003 as their managing editor. Prior to joining Carnegie, Shivnath led the global marketing efforts and digital communications at the SR Group. He's a noted speaker at numerous global events, including the World Economic Forum, and the Milken Institute Conference, as well as several Indian industry summits on issues ranging from India's economic policy, domestic politics, and the impact of new digital technologies on society. With that introduction, let me kick off this event and hand over to our moderator, Venkatesh Sarvasiddhi, Senior Head, Digital Skill Partnership, Policy and CSR at NSDC. Over to you, Venkatesh. Thanks, uh, Priya, for uh, setting the context and introducing the speakers. Uh, you know, I think uh, this is a great uh, opportunity bringing in uh, the both sides of the world, the technology as well as the policy level uh, from an apex body NSDC in the scaling ecosystem together and building such interesting initiative around it. I welcome Dr. Manish and uh, Mr. Shivnath uh, to this interesting forum. So this five side uh, chat would be quite an interesting thing. So the way I would look into this is, you know, moderate it with a series of questions and uh, also the audience who are attending today can they can keep typing their questions and towards the end depending on the availability of the time we would love to even take up questions from the audience uh, we welcome you both uh, to start with uh, mr shivnath you know uh, whatsapp and nsdc joining hands to drive this digital skill champion program can you elaborate a little bit for our audience and for us what is the significance of this program Sure, Venkatesh. Uh, firstly, thanks so much for inviting me and uh, Manish, uh, thanks for the 
honor you've extended to us to be on the same platform as yours. Uh, I think firstly, Venkatesh, I would like to uh, convey my sincere thanks to your organization as such, given that I've been a big fan of NSDC of what it has achieved. And I think the whole mission that NSDC embarked upon a few years ago, firstly, to bring the whole public-private partnership uh, to the fore of how to solve for scaling in India. Uh, that has been the uh, central mission of, um, um, uh, if you see Facebook, uh, Facebook at the family of apps as well as uh, WhatsApp, how do we solve for things at scale? So I think one line which defines this partnership would be solving for skills at scale in a smart manner is what the essence of this partnership is all about. Now, now where at the digital I become NSDC or replicate NSDC and and by the way, pardon me for my bad uh, internet today, but I'll try my best to convey uh, the points. I personally feel that at the end of the day, what NSDC is trying to do, WhatsApp can be a very, very credible ally to do that. We have done so in other related fields, and I now think scaling is an idea whose time arrived a while ago, but to solve it at scale, especially post the pandemic, I think we can play a critical role. And we have several learnings from the pandemic, which indicate to us that we can actually solve for scaling at scale in partnership with NSDC. Uh, I can give several examples of uh, what, what we uh, have done, especially with certain government agencies. But what it underlines, Venkatesh, is that we are an ally for India, ally to solve for the national goals of the country, for the government, and ally for NSDC to solve for scaling at scale. Let me give you a couple of examples, uh, which kind of will give your audience, those who are excited to kind of adopt these modules or adopt these training program. And I'm really thankful to Manish for at least seeing that vision um, uh, by uh, leading NSDC. Uh, for example, MyGov, what did we solve during the pandemic through MyGov? Was communication at scale, communication of accurate and credible information at scale. Similarly, if you look at our programs with organization like Wahan, solving for blue collared employment program that scale, right? If you look at our Kolkata Municipal Corporation chatbot, solving for vaccination awareness at scale. So at the end of the day, our uh, product philosophy of being remaining simple, reliable and secure is what helps solve for at scale. One last example I wanted to give, and we are very excited where our financial services uh, allyship with different companies like HDFC, et cetera, are working out in the financial inclusion space with pension uh, being delivered at scale via WhatsApp. Again, we don't want to become a financial services company, but we can become a credible ally, a digital ally to take these solutions to the last mile. And I'm, I'm hoping Manish with his pragmatic vision will allow us to solve for him uh, at scale again, as I said, uh, with 400 million plus users in the country, I think skilling is something we definitely must take up at the challenge, which I'm sure Manish's goal is. Thanks, uh, Shivnath. I think uh, if I pick up uh, at an Uber level, something like the things which I really liked are the scale and skills coming together uh, is a beautiful aspect, the kind of a scale and WhatsApp can bring to the ecosystem. And you know, from scaling perspective, the value add NSDC can have with the kind of a scale. I think that's an, one of the key things I would uh, take out from your conversation. Now, moving on to uh, Manish, uh, uh, you know, there is an always, always, uh, an issue of students and jobs and opportunities for the future, especially in the pandemic times, it becomes more relevant. So, you know, from you, uh, Manish, what is your uh, key take on the jobs uh, for the future? What kind of skills are required in the world of digital economy? Uh, thanks, Venkatesh. Uh, I guess uh, when we talk of uh, the, the jobs of the future, uh, we need to recognize one aspect uh, of change that's occurring that has occurred globally and that's going to impact the way uh, people can access jobs as well as businesses in future uh, which is the fact that in 1990s you had the internet uh, revolution coming into the world you know it changes the way civilization interacts i can give you one example uh, that when i joined uh, civil service that was in 1990s early 1990s if there was a complaint in a remote part of village in Tripura, which, which was the place where I was working, then somebody would write a letter and that would come on the back of an elephant to a subdivisional town. Then from there in a jeep, 
uh, it'll come down to maybe Agatala and then somebody gets gets that information. Now compare that to today, you know, and you you know that you can just make a WhatsApp, uh, you know, message and the the policymaker knows what's the problem in that village. What I'm going to say is essentially is that the world has changed civilizationally. We have changed since uh, the time of internet. And a uh, lot of things that we see today, including WhatsApp, is riding on the back of that technology platform. This is what we call the life transforming technological change that impacts human civilization as a whole. Now, when, the, when that's the scale at which things have changed, obviously what kind of jobs you get, what kind of jobs you aim for, all the changes. Why? Because uh, one of the things which we have noticed is that employers, uh, they basically say that uh, the, the backend technology is changing very quick. So we need people who can quickly adapt to it, who can quickly learn these new technologies. And how do you learn that? It, we don't learn that in the, the traditional way, which is the industry 2.0 way. You know, you're going from class one to class 10. This is like a factory line. Uh, the, the way a car is made in a factory line is the same way we have at our education. But what we need now is a very modular kind of education, highly, highly linked to what is it that is needed in that industry, in that specific geographical context. And that's where the power of organizations like WhatsApp, et cetera, come in, or your tools actually come in, because you can become very precise, you can become very targeted, and you are able to provide highly modular kind of learning, which, you know, in four hours give me, gives me uh, such sharp knowledge that it, it is relevant to the industry that is local. So I think uh, becoming highly conscious of the fact that apart from the generic knowledge that you gain, you need to acquire skills that are relevant to the market. That's one part of it. And two other things which I think is critical is maybe polishing up your soft skills because I think that's going to get more and more important. And when I say soft skills, essentially the ability to work in teams, you know, the ability to collaborate as pandemic showed, competition has limits. You know, and, and I think the world in future is going to get more and more collaborative. Many countries actually recognize the value of collaboration already, and, and therefore they thrive well too. Uh, competition has its value in economics, and it leads you up to a certain point. But I think collaboration is critical if you want to survive in, in, in difficult times. And, and therefore, how do you build up those kind of team uh, working abilities? But then creativity, that's another thing on which people have to work. And uh, problem solving, you know, complex problem solving. So there are certain types of soft skills on which people will have to focus. Communication definitely is an important one. And the final thing is that I guess apart from looking for jobs, people tend to become, will have to become more entrepreneurial because I think technology has unleashed the potential for becoming entrepreneurial. It's, it's your mind and it's your technology, right? And and uh, people things which we could have never imagined, things like Uber, for example, is, you know, for, there are lots of such, uh, you know, innovations that rides on the back of technology. And uh, it's, it's to your imagination now that can you really create some value out of the technological uh, innovations that's occurring around, around the clock. Uh, so I think people need to get innovative and uh, look at it from that perspective too. So these are a few things which I wanted to share with this. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Manish. In fact, uh, you know, modular learning, soft skills, collaborative skills, what you pointed out are of course, very, very important in this uh, generation. And, uh, you know, the interesting thing I picked up from your answer is also focus on the entrepreneurial mindset, which is important. So not just on jobs. In fact, we are seeing many of the unicorns from India as Zomatos and others of the world uh, are urban clubs and Zomatos are planning to get onto their IPO screen. So I think the next decade would be all about startups and entrepreneurship. I really appreciate your point. So moving on further uh, uh, to Mr. Shivnath. So, you know, the if you look into uh, the WhatsApp and as an ideal platform for driving digital skilling and building India, you know, how do you particularly see, especially in the pandemic times, uh, the role of WhatsApp uh, as an ideal platform in empowering skilling and digital awareness? Because this is something which would be, uh, you know, affecting everyone, especially the students, the people in the colleges, uh, the education ecosystem is affected a lot. So there are digital interventions. Uh, I would like to know from WhatsApp, you know, how do you look up to your platform as an ideal platform for digital skilling and building digital awareness? Uh, Venkatesh, again, uh, I'll build an example, but let me first uh, link it to what uh, Manish just said. The whole play about entrepreneurship. If there is one thing the pandemic has taught us is to how it triggered 
out of adversity a uh, amazing and amazing entrepreneurial fire uh, in people because they had to survive and we saw it at urban level we saw it at the village level we saw it at semi urban level and we have several examples with which i can tell you the use of whatsapp allowed people to feel empowered to launch their business expand markets for their existing business and relaunch their what they did during before the pandemic to reorient their business to a new thing I will give you an example. Uh, we have a, a very, very significant partner in the name of Mandeshi Bank and Mandeshi Foundation. Chetna is the founder. And just with the use of the SMB app, which I believe is a part of the skilling program with NSPC as well, how to train people. We uh, initiatives in order to uh, win that. And our point is at the end of the day, uh, we we through entrepreneurial examples um, unleashed a different kind of a desire in people. That's one way to look at it. Again, with the CSC the, uh, at, the, at the central level to deliver skilling program uh, to people who were disconnected by the pandemic and training them on things and then them building on their local produce to deliver to newer markets is another example. So either way you look at it, the use of WhatsApp was able to link the entrepreneurial hunger or the entrepreneurial fire in people to train them to use the app and to open new markets. So I think at the end of the day, if you want to solve for skilling, there are two aspects of it. One, what are you skilling them with? Which I think NSDC is the expert. And we at a product level can tell them what kind of product expertise they need to know of. And then how do they deploy it? And which is again, the soft skilling part that Manish talked about. I think either way you look at it, the use of technology as a vehicle to drive the delivery of that eventual goal is going to be critical. And for us, 400 million plus are perfectly poised to solve for these complex issues in a manner which Manish touched upon by saying traditional models can no longer do. Right? If you were to imagine a future uh, where a pandemic kind of put on hold the entire education system, and yet thanks to our partnership with CSC or even the launch of the Ministry of Education chatbot called Dikshatara, not a single day of disruption happened, right? We have examples in partners like Convigenius, et cetera, who have used the chatbot as well as WhatsApp to deliver education 24 seven during the pandemic. What does it go to prove that any adversity, if you think of deploying technology in a more intelligent manner and in a manner which people can use, it isn't like, Oh, I've got this massively complex solution and hence people should accept the delivery of a product. Hence, my, I mean, at WhatsApp, our fundamental belief is you tell us the problem. We will try and figure out whether this can be solved or not. And I, I, I'm hugely thankful to the entire Indian user base that they continue to innovate constantly to either be the recipient of a good thing that's happening on WhatsApp or using it to deliver something good for the rest of the society. Thanks, thanks, uh, Shiv. And I also, uh, Shivnath, one of the points which you mentioned, which I really want to highlight is in the current times when technology is moving very fast and things are changing, businesses are changing, launching businesses, expanding and reorienting themselves to various situations, whether it is pandemic or maybe some situations which may emerge, emerge later. So, you know, WhatsApp gives that kind of an uh, value add to end users not just at an urban level, even at a rural level, everybody has an access to it. That's the beauty of the scale and also the uh, dynamic situation in which WhatsApp can shift uh, trends and also connect with people solving their problems. So moving on to uh, Manish, uh, you know, Manish, you touched upon the uh, importance of entrepreneurship and how students should look at it. You know, just going a little bit further, uh, as the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister also keeps talking about, the mindset change, especially in the youth, uh, from an, a job seeker to a job creator. You know, I would like to you know hear from you. Uh, what's your uh, message to a lot of students who have joined us, or for the youth of the nation, uh, from job seeker to a job creator mindset? Um, I think, firstly, this is a great time to be a job creator, uh, for reasons that we spoke of. That you are, we are essentially in a technological. Uh, curve, you know, which is rapidly changing and therefore creating many new opportunities. Uh, it is basically dependent on your ability to create. Uh, so, so in that sense is perfectly a good time. Um, 
I think few things which are quite critical for when we plan of um, entrepreneurship. Now, one is I think uh, the ability for people to go beyond their comfort zone. Um, many people like to stick to their comfort zone, you know, and I think it's necessary to challenge that. And how do you how do you do that? I guess a few of the ways to do that is uh, look at examples of, of people around you who have done it, who might have failed, uh, but still they persisted because they had certain values on which uh, you know they they strongly believed, and eventually they made it. Uh, so the satisfaction that comes out uh, of of the struggle is of a very high order. So I guess uh, people need to challenge their comfort zone. Firstly, uh, secondly, I think it's uh, very important that. Uh, you create the right set of team uh, for this purpose because in, in trying to be entrepreneurial, you need to become creative. And uh, usually in uh, literatures of creativity, what we have found uh, is that only half the solution is with one person, the other half is with somebody else. You know, and, and therefore you need to be looking, you, you, you can't, you are not necessarily uh, the one who has everything, uh, that there, there are other people around you who will actually have some pieces of that solution and therefore having that right set of people around you uh, with whom you could partner so that your creativity is enhanced uh, that your solutions are uh, you know far much more objective and far much more uh, let's say related to, to to the solution that you are seeking so that comes through uh, a third thing which i would suggest is mixing around with people who are entrepreneurial because it's like you know you imbibe the spirit of the kind of people that you are meeting and uh, it doesn't matter which you feel that person might be working, uh, but they're different type of people. And uh, I think uh, if you are if you are interacting with entrepreneurial people more often, you would gain you would tend to gain their energy. You would tend to gain their insights too. So I think that's so that's something which you have to hunt for. You have to look around for. I would also encourage people to read uh, quite a bit on that. You know, so uh, I, I usually consider every book as a condensed thought of an individual. It's a personality of an individual. And when you're reading a uh, reading about somebody who is entrepreneurial, uh, reading a book a book about him, or reading a book written by that person, then you tend to absorb a lot of the values of that person. So you need to spend the reading also. And a final thing which I consider very important, and I think that's something which is lacking in, in our culture, but is the, is necessary for us to build, is you need to celebrate failure. Everybody who is entrepreneurial will fail. You will fail once, twice, yeah, unless you are very lucky, you'll succeed the very first time. But usually, people will fail, and I think we should we should understand that when it comes to entrepreneurship, failing once, twice is okay. You know, and I, I think you you need to understand that you are learning in each of these steps where you are failing. Uh, that's the that's the important part of it. The celebration is for the learning that you that has come to you. You would not necessarily become you know a perfect entrepreneur on your very first attempt unless you're exceptionally lucky. So I guess accepting failure. And learning from failure and making that as the stepping stone for your next venture. Uh, that's the attitude one should have. So those are a few of my thoughts, Venkatesh. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Dr. Venkatesh, Manish. Can I, can I, sorry, Venkatesh, can I just uh, link on that? I'm sorry, I, I'm just jumping sure, in. Sure, sure, absolutely. I, I love the train of thought that uh, Manish put out. Uh, talking about the creative aspect and seeking help. I think those are the two signs of a entrepreneur saying, how do I constantly reinvent myself? I want to share a couple of examples just to prove uh, how the entrepreneurial zeal in India is so interwoven with our culture. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, everything has to be about a unicorn. I, but I want to give you a couple of examples again. Um, there was this hosiery making unit in rural Maharashtra. They realized that their market got shut down due to the pandemic, etc. They reoriented their business into making masks and then adopted the usage of WhatsApp to create markets for themselves and eventually became one of the largest mask making units. All that they did was to reinvent, be creative and sought the help of technology. One example. The second example, which is a lot of people actually get amused when I give this example, is to set up a virtual animal market using WhatsApp's video calling feature. It was like a group of uh, vets, uh, animal specialists, and they created a goat market. Uh, now, you may pay, say like, what the heck, why? But look at the way they oriented themselves because they could not travel to those rural markets anymore. They created a goat market or a virtual animal, animal market using uh, WhatsApp. Similarly, I mean, when you talk about use of technology to be more creative, uh, using the SMB app, any store today can replicate the virtual store 
through catalogs, carts. So as if you are walking into a store, all you have to orient yourself saying that instead of going to the Kirana, if the Kirana store is coming to me on my phone via WhatsApp. So I think there are millions of examples like this, which I can give you where we have witnessed how these people are able to reinvent, seek help from technology. And the last point which Mani said is that at the end of the day, if you're connected with this community, what happens is entrepreneurship is infectious. Like when you get to see other person has created value, it is all about you getting uh, triggered on that one. And we have seen via WhatsApp, these groups where uh, uh, we've been asked to come and train. People are like, have that hunger to say, okay, I also want to learn about the SMB app, right? As, as I speak, I believe there's some question which is popping up, which should be, uh, which should be something that I'm sure you will take up. Somebody saying, how do I get a WhatsApp business account? I mean, these are the questions which kind of evoke the entrepreneurial zeal, I think, which Manish was talking about. And we are happy to help at any point in time. That's so nice, uh, Shivnath, the kind of examples you gave across India, especially in the pandemic times, how people have reinvented their businesses. And uh, that shows, and also with the kind of a scale you have, the kind of an impact they can create with their creative ideas. And also really like the fact that Dr. Manish touched upon the celebration of failure, which is extremely important in a country like India, because failure is not seen something with an open hands and people don't uh, much appreciate that. And that mindset has to change uh, because celebrating failure is about a stepping stone and learning is something which is very important, especially from an entrepreneurship mindset. And uh, moving on further, uh, you know, to uh, you, Shiv, not back again, uh, you know, this, this program, Digital Skills Champion Program, which you are launching uh, today, uh, does it also address the financial inclusion and the new age digital financial platforms? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the way uh, we look at financial inclusion, uh, it needs to be a subset of digital inclusion, Venkatesh. I mean, eventually, if you don't have digital access, talking about financial inclusion, at least from our lens, is a bit difficult to uh, uh, fathom. But uh, just to give you examples of this again, what is it that we are trying to solve when we say we want financial inclusion goals to be met? We are actually trying to solve for those who do not have either access, awareness, or affordability, right? And which is where we feel WhatsApp can help solve for some of these goals. I was giving you the pension example. Uh, what we are trying to do here is making sure that we are able to solve for these three. WhatsApp from an access point of view, I'm assuming 400 million plus is a good, good user base to start with. Uh, awareness, we have uh, been talking to enough financial services companies where they feel they can, using our chatbots or different innovative solutions, they can solve for the last mile where people either don't get to know or, or, or are, are not able to access information or are aware of it. Then come the affordability. What is happening is at the last mile, if you take the, the, the intermediary out, I mean, when I say intermediary, I mean the middleman who is supposed to sell a financial product out, then automatically you are able to establish a direct line of connection. So that, that solves for the three A's, access, affordability, and awareness. And then comes, our partnership or allyship with the financial services sector. What is it doing? We are not becoming a pension company. I'm not becoming my insurance company. And yet by working with SBI life insurance, I can create sachet size insurance plans, which somebody can go and buy. Underlying all this, if you see, and we have not talked about it, WhatsApp pay. Uh, we are late to the party, as they say, and we got approvals only in November. And you will see, as we as we rise uh, uh, to the occasion on WhatsApp payment, we would be able to give the last mile. Everybody gets excited about digital payment in urban centers, but imagine if WhatsApp pay the way people um, use WhatsApp if they are able to transact digitally beyond the excitement of the urban centers. You have suddenly uh, taken the prime minister's vision of a cashless society or a digital India to a different level altogether. Again. Remember, what are we doing? Solving at scale. I mean, that remains the underlying factor here as far as we are concerned. And what could we unleash eventually? Unleash microcredit to small business owners, again, in partnership, uh, help bring down cost of banking, which is the fundamental solve for financial inclusion. And by the way, um, people who say that banks are not interested, they're absolutely wrong. Between solving for the last mile, banks are super excited super excited and innovating with us 
on fronts like micro insurance, micro pension, uh, uh, innovating their product. And they were stranded by solving for the three A's, right? Access, affordability, and awareness. We are bringing that allyship to the table. And hence, I think, as Manish also said, eventually, when you seek help, when you deploy technology to go beyond the traditional ways of doing it, I think financial inclusion is the next goal. We've got very positive feedback from the government, uh, from stakeholders, including the central bank. They all support what we can solve for. And I think we are quite excited. Uh, as, as we say, the, the game has just begun. And I think the excitement is yet to unfold. Absolutely, Shivnath. And I, I, I know, appreciate the, the kind of work you guys are doing. And uh, there also the importance of microcredit and financial inclusion at the bottom of the pyramid is extremely important. Even that's one of the key aspects World Economic Forum touches when it talks about the Indian ecosystem. So with the kind of a scale you have and the kind of connect you have in the ecosystem, you can actually be a kind of a collaborator bringing in large institutions and banking on one side and extending their, as you said, such a size uh, products and uh, you, know, uh, you know offerings uh, to the ecosystem using technology. I think that would be a big game changer as we move into the next decade. So moving on further to Dr. Manish, uh, you know, you've been in the, you know, understanding this ecosystem at the policy level, uh, at the same time at the industry side, you actively work with the sector skill councils, guiding them. So how do you see that academic, uh, you know, uh, and the government partnerships in bridging the industry academic gaps, uh, especially in driving workforce development? There's always a gap between the industry and what academia needs. And uh, how are you seeing to bridge that gap and uh, contributing to the workforce development? Some thoughts from your side. So I think, uh, um... Uh, when it comes to the the gap between industry and academia and how government is helping helping in a way bridge that gap uh, uh, there is a very deep understanding within the government about the economic nature of skills the fact that it's a case of market failure and it's case of market failure globally uh, traditionally where market works well governments don't interfere it lets the market function but where market fails the government comes in and tries to sort it out so if you look at skills in, a, in its uh, full range, what you'll find is that 20% of India, uh, the labor force, are in the formal space and remaining 80% is in the informal space. And uh, uh, the 80% which is in informal space is where market functions even poor, poorer. And essentially it implies that um, industry would not skill a person beyond a certain level with their own money because they're afraid that person whom I have skilled is going to be posed by somebody else, my competitor, and therefore you lose. So what does the similar such programs in state governments? There are DDU, GK, there is DDU, GKY coming from Ministry of Rural Development. So there are multitude programs, which is focused on skilling. And uh, the idea is to skill these 80% of labor force that is on the informal sector. There is, of course, some money also for the formal sector, but more of it, uh, and rightly so, from the government side, goes to the informal sector. And every year from NSDC, we skill about 2.5 million people approximately in a normal year. And uh, we, we also try to assess through this PMKY people whom we skill, does it lead to any change um, uh, in, in their wages? And what we have found that compared to a cohort, uh, a same cohort, somebody who is unskilled and gets a job, compared to that, somebody who is skilled and gets a job, there's a 15% differential in wages. That shows the power of skilling uh, that comes to government's uh, programming. So essentially, government is bridging this, this gap between, uh, let's say, academia and industry uh, by providing the sort way of education uh, has its value up to a certain point. But if you want to attach it to the industry or you want to make it relevant for industry, then you need to do something more at the cutting edge and uh, with the help of all these 37 sector skill councils, which have been created over time, uh, we have devised what we call qualification packs. These are like three months, very specialized courses in 37 different sectors uh, that is imparted to these 2.5 million people that we skill to NSDC and maybe another 2.5 million through various other uh, programs, eventually assessment done, being done by uh, the ecosystem that we have created. We have about 11,000 centers across the country more 700 plus partners who operate, uh, private sector partners who operate in this uh, space. Uh, so I think uh, they, they have made a, uh, there is a very good, uh, I guess, filling up of the gap that has occurred. Uh, in the long term, I guess, 
the if you look at the recent education policy, there's a recognition of uh, trying to embed skilling into education itself. And I think that's a fantastic move. And uh, that's, I guess, the next phase. Uh, we are at the moment in discussion with CBAC uh, to see how skills could be embedded into schools. As you, uh, you are aware that we operate in many schools across India, uh, but uh, they are, uh, I think the scale at which you operate is very small compared to India challenges schools. And uh, uh, the next days with uh, the new the education policy would be seeing uh, more of uh, skilling getting into schools and uh, and in some sense uh, integrating with the regular academics. Uh, so therefore, the differential would be that okay, you acquire certain generic skill uh, that is general generic knowledge through the regular academic courses, but there is there would be a booster course uh, which is more about skills that you gain if you wanted to join the workforce. So that's the manner in which you'll go forward. And uh, NSDC is very much uh, involved in that process too, uh, as we plan plan forward. Thanks, Venkatesh. Thank, thanks, uh, Dr. Manish. Uh, you touched upon the sector skill councils, how they're playing role in bridging the gap and also for the 2.5 million people, NSDC skilling, how you're introducing these very interesting modular led industry driven courses, which can really impact them from uh, driving employability and skills which are required. For the workforce. Uh, moving on uh, further, uh, you know, my question to uh, Mr. Shivnath would be: So there is a lot of uh, interesting launches you have done around chatbots for citizens in the past, uh, and have you access for primarily to access information to bridge the gaps? Uh, so if you would like to touch upon a little bit on WhatsApp's chatbots and its growing relevance, uh, especially in the pandemic times for digital India. Oh, sure, Venkatesh. I, I briefly mentioned some of them, uh, but let me stress upon how we feel our approach on the chatbot, of course, got, um, I would say, amplified due to the pandemic where we were thrown challenges to solve for uh, issues which we had never dealt with. And let me give you a range of uh, uh, topics on which we tried to solve for it. I talked about uh, MyGov uh, at the time when the pandemic began, if you remember, there was a hunger for credible and accurate information. And we all recognize and realize that at that point in time, what we need to get across to people is accurate and credible information. And that was coming through from government sources. That was the fundamental source of truth. And MyGov, I must tell you today, is one of the world's largest chatbots talking to people on a daily basis. So accurate and credible information to solve for. Then if you look at how we have partnered with, with the National Commission of Women, uh, in terms of safety and security, not just for women who got affected by the pandemic, but in general as an approach to safety and security of our users. I think NCW is a very good example under the chairperson's uh, um, uh, direction of how we can uh, deliver the message, create helplines, create real-time accurate information, especially for expectant mothers, uh, and solve for that at scale. Uh, then comes uh, the issue of solving for food, uh, another chatbot which helps to uh, make sure food distribution is done efficiently and allocated to those who need it. Um, similarly, the vaccination piece, if you look at it, what we are working on. I mean, there are several such examples where we felt that to deliver government to citizen services uh, can be solved at scale using these chatbots. COVID meals for India, India Shield, X-ray Setu, Robin Hood Army, there are many such examples. And by the way, even in traditional government to citizen services, for example, in tax uh, in Andhra Pradesh or Chennai Municipal Corporation, we've had a solution. In Gurgaon, for example, at the height of the second wave, allocation of beds, availability of beds, working with the district collector of Gurgaon, we launched a chatbot. I think either way you look at it, our fundamental belief is not whether the chatbot is the solution. Our belief is whether we can solve a complex problem where access of information and availability in real time has to be solved for and which is where uh, WhatsApp's technolo technological prowess comes in. Even for NSDC, I think what is very interesting is, and a lot of people don't give enough credit to government efforts or government program. One of the reasons we believe if we can get your e-scales and everything through the chatbot as well, uh, one credit you have to give to the government, India has abundance of digital infrastructure today. It may not have abundance of physical infrastructure, but you cannot complain that in India, digital does not work. 
it does work. It may not work for the last mile, which is what we are trying to solve for. And what NSDC's partnership brings to the table for us, at least, uh, today, is to solve for a real life problem. What Manish touched upon is, I want to be an entrepreneur. I don't know enough, or I'm already an existing entrepreneur. How can I do more? Which is where the role of technology, I think, comes in. And by the way, I'm not saying anything new. WhatsApp happens to be the technology of today and the future. Technology has played a critical role. You go back to industrial revolution, you come to the early 70s internet, come to the early 80s, what uh, desktops did. I think WhatsApp is at the cusp of that cutting edge where through simplicity of our approach, we can solve that scale. Yeah, I, I really appreciate some of the examples you gave and the last uh, closing uh, thing you said on simplicity and the scale. I think that's the beauty of it, you know, because a lot of people use WhatsApp from a scale perspective and the simplicity with which you can approach can really be a game changer. And uh, I think uh, in interest of time, because we're almost, uh, uh, you know, done with our time limit, uh, I would like to pick up uh, one or two questions from the uh, chat box. One is uh, centric to a specific need, an individual who runs an NGO uh, wants to drive some soft skill programs. And uh, after hearing your uh, speech, uh, Shivnath is inspired. He wants to open up a WhatsApp account, business account. Uh, maybe your team can get in touch with him. And uh, this is a this is a very interesting area. You know, empowering the people, especially in the rural space. Uh, you know, by some of your offerings in the SMB, uh, maybe uh, team can get in touch with him. Then I also have a very interesting uh, view uh, and a question uh, by an individual. Uh, you know, focused to. Uh, focused around vocational education that is introduced as part of the national education policy 2020 and uh, you know from class six he wants to understand uh, uh, the views from dr manish uh, about the relevance of this and how successful this uh, initiative can lead us towards uh, a better workforce development and matching the industry standards dr manish yeah so far i think uh, um new education policy and uh, vocational education from class six. Uh, there are a few things which, uh, which we need to uh, be aware of when it comes to skilling. So skilling is not aspirational in India, as we know. Uh, it's something which was not always true. In the past, if you go back into history, India, India is actually filled with such rich architecture, such rich accomplishments, regardless of which field you look into, that you know we, we were highly skilled as people. But uh, I think down the line, with Macaulay coming in somewhere in between, uh, most of us aspired to become clerks in British companies. And uh, eventually, I think we, we aspired to be in some way connected to government. And that's how, that's how I think uh, our history evolved uh, in the later part. Um, so now, the skill not being aspirational, how do you bring back this this whole thought process that skill is not really a negative word, right? I mean, the fact that we were always skilled, that skill was valued, that skill was paid for, that skill can get you a good um, good job as well as good respect in the society. That's something which you have to begin working at from schools. So if you look at uh, some of the best examples in the world, for example, in Finland, uh, you, you find children actually first learning skills before they actually pick up alphabets. Uh, you find them learning skills from right from the very first time they actually get into schools uh, you know and they, they begin to fiddle around with tools and uh, understand okay what does plumbing mean you know and, and i think that creates respect in the mind for the work too and uh, the, everybody grows up with a feeling that they, they, this is not something which is inferior or superior it's something i enjoy and that's the reason i picked that up to be my vocation i, I think that exploration begins early in life and class six uh, is is a okay time uh, in other parts of the world is done even earlier and uh, therefore from this from the aspirational side this is critical i would say secondly for somebody who who might not be too keen uh, to be doing let's say a master's course eventually uh, but wants to acquire skills that after plus 2 or maybe class 10 they want to get into uh, some jobs uh, this is a perfect moment because from 6 up to 10 if if a person has focused on some specific skill that he or she enjoys, then you would have enough by the time you're out that market will value you, will respect you for, for the abilities that you have, you have acquired and, pay, and will pay you well. So you can create your profession out of it. 
And, and in every way, therefore, I personally feel that uh, the education policy with his focus on skilling from class six is actually an extremely good step. And uh, depending upon how it is implemented, it can it can really be a game changer for the informal sector in India uh, that often gets into the job without any skills and actually learns on the job and therefore suffers hugely. Uh, some of the analytics that we have done have shown that people who get into jobs are, are unskilled but get into a job or semi-skilled get into a job. When you ask them that how much you expect you expect it compared to what you have, in average, they get about 10,000 rupees or 9,000 rupees approximately, and their expectation from life is 18,000. And that's the reason why there's attrition, such a high attrition. And when you talk to the employer asking that, why don't you pay them 18? Why do you pay them just nine? And they say that, okay, we expected the person to be far more skilled. We would have paid them 18 if the, he or she was actually skilled to the level that I wanted. Uh, I can, I'll be observing this person for another one year, two year. If that person is really good, I'm actually going to pay 18. You know, so therefore there is this disjunct uh, of, of aspiration and what the person gets paid. And you could bridge that by ensuring that uh, the person is fully skilled by the time they actually begin to look for workforce or work opportunity uh, when they are out of the schools. So, Vikates, those are some preliminary thoughts on this issue. It's a complex one, but just your thoughts. Yeah, interesting, uh, Manish. It's good to see the intervention of vocational skilling introduced at a school level. As you rightly said, there are different countries in Scandinavia and Europe, and uh, even in developed countries who had done it even before. And I think uh, implementation of how we deliver this makes a lot of relevance. And uh, especially keeping in mind uh, uh, the skills aspiration, and that's something a mindset requirement is required in. And I think this new education policy, which introduced, will bring that mindset. Uh, moving on to the last question, maybe we'll pick up uh, one more. This is uh, for Shivnath. Uh, there are 400 million users of WhatsApp. That's a huge number in India. And the person wants to know, how WhatsApp or what are the plans WhatsApp has, especially in learning, uh, because of a lot of lockdowns and others, what have happened, the, the physical structures have come to close downs and everything is happening digitally for schools and colleges and the other educational uh, setups. How, how does WhatsApp look into with the kind of a scale it has to bring in more learning apps or maybe empower startups to partner with uh, to drive this uh, ecosystem of especially learning during the pandemic or as you go forward post pandemic also? Uh, Vekinesh, thanks for asking that question, and I'm, I'm glad you uh, asked this at the end. When you when we talk about 400 million numbers, I must also very openly say that we also recognize the responsibility that it brings with it. For us, the focus and my message to the youth or anyone listening to this is technology is up to you how you use it. Uh, we will do everything to keep our platform safe. But remember, WhatsApp is also encrypted. Uh, we don't get to see your messages. So my first uh, request and the message to everyone is we know our responsibility and we also request everyone to use it responsibly and keep the platform safe. Second, in terms of learning, I think Manish touched upon some of the fantastic thoughts around skilling. Um, if I may, with your permission, I remember an anecdote uh, which the prime minister used to uh, make in one of his speeches around entrepreneurship saying, I think there's a loss of uh, connection there. Uh, uh, so uh, we would uh, wait for Shivnath to come back. Maybe let's give us uh, uh, maybe 30 seconds or so. Well, entrepreneurs. Similarly with NSDC, our aim is you are good at skilling uh, you are good at skilling. We want to partner with you. Uh, please remember, we do not want to become the owners of this domain. What we want to do is become as much of a partner with everybody in this domain. So as I said, WhatsApp is a, in a way, open platform. We are happy to partner with anybody who has a learning solution. Examples like NSDC, examples like um, CSC, examples like Convergenius. 
go on to prove uh, in fact we talked about the new education policy the example of madhya pradesh madhya pradesh actually calls out is because of whatsapp we were able to continue to deliver education during the pandemic so as i said whether it's the state whether it's the private sector whether it's public private partnership as yours we are looking at skilling across the country learning across the country by partnership that's our approach uh, as i said at the very beginning a digital ally to this country and uh, doing everything which is good for india as far as whatsapp and family of apps is concerned thank you thank you shivnath and i believe this partnership will uh, really help us build that scale you know and we can uh, you know leverage the institutional synergies between nsdc as well as uh, uh, whatsapp in a big way uh, so now to celebrate this moment and uh, uh, to kick start our partnership and it's an, the occasion uh, i would request uh, the a small animation video to be played out uh, which is uh, because we are in a digital world it's more of a digital handshake uh, because of work workload uh, you know uh, scenarios of the covid situations so can i request the it team to play the animation video to celebrate the occasion thank you so much uh, you know for this uh, uh, moment of uh, celebration of bringing in two large institutional organizations both at from an nsdc perspective and uh, whatsapp to address a big area which is digital skilling and if we believe that with the institutional synergies we have we will be able to address that need and uh, i would with this i would like to thank shivnath and dr manish for their valuable time joining us today uh help answer many aspects of digital skilling how technology is changing and uh, industry academy gaps and also about the program and what we can do for the future uh, really appreciate their valuable time and i also appreciate the time of uh, the teams at nsdc and whatsapp uh, for coordinating and putting a putting a nice event put across a nice event like this uh, which addresses the needs of the people and also gives them an idea of what's happening especially this kind of awareness is extremely required during pandemic times uh, i i would also love to thank the press and media who joined us today students from various colleges and schools faculty tutors teachers who joined us today and uh, you know nsdc training partners across india uh, who have been here to listen to and also take the advantage of this program thank you everyone and really appreciate your time for joining and if you have Uh, any questions do write us and you know you can drop in on your chat box and we would love to address them uh, post the event also we can mail them back thank you so much everyone with this i would uh, call the end of the event and thank you for your valuable time thank, thank you, you. Thank, you. thank you thank you manish thanks thanks